Okay, right, just uh, time for more update really. Um, 3.30 at the moment. Uh, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to recast the rod on the right. I've had a coot pick up a couple of times now, so I'm reckoning this has either had it really. So I've probably been done by the coot. Um, what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to cast a little stringer out with one of my little um, the little PVA bag that I had earlier on. With that simple mix of the uh, crushed Crab and Cray Boilie and the, uh, t and the FT pellet. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention really about the uh, PVA was um, what happens is when PVA dissolves, the, the string in, in particular, it, it kind of it kind of com it clumps together really more or less. It, um, there's a word for it really, but I can't think of it right now off the, off the top of my head really. Um, but yeah, when that happens, everything tightens together and all the baits will group together, and sometimes that can be quite an issue. So what I like to do is I put a tiny little granny knot. See that right there. Uh, just underneath the uh, top boily, just put a tiny little grain knot there just to stop, just to stop that bait from um, from grouping together with the other one or even sliding upwards. So, it's just an easy way to eliminate anything like that, really. Um, so let's get a out there next. Um, nothing still, no indications of fish. That uh, water, the water still isn't uh, clearing up at all. There's no um, there's no patches where you can see any fish feeding or anything like that. It's all been disturbed by the wind, so um, anyway, we're still looking up hopefully for a fish tonight. I mean, chances are still high, but it's looking like a difficult session right now. Anyway, I'll update you guys later on probably, alright? Okay, right, it's um, five past seven in the morning right now. Uh, just woken up literally. Just, just got out of the bivy a little while ago, just check the rods. Um, not really any action at all, I mean... I did. I did have a, have a fish on yesterday at around nine o'clock. I reckon it was a catfish, but um, unfortunately it spat the hook, which was a bit of a bugger. I was a bit gutted about that. But uh, it was definitely a sign that the fish were out there on the spots, probably, because I didn't touch the left hand rod at all, really, after I um, cast it out. But uh, it's all, all the rods been recast now. Everything's just left where it is now, just to uh, hopefully. Pray to catch a fish now. Um, it would be good to have a fish. I mean, I wasn't expecting a blank session, but then again, you never know what can happen. So you can come down here for like five days or six days and still blank. Just one of those sort of things that, that just can happen, you know. Uh, so uh, if anything does happen, if anything else does happen, I'll just um, I'll update you guys. But. Uh, but for now, we'll just keep our fingers crossed and uh, wish for the best, really. Alright. Okay, right, well, uh, it's, just up to, it's just coming up to 5 to 1 now. Um, it looks like there could be some good news on the horizon. I could well be staying another night, which might mean that I would be getting a fish. I mean, I've just been doing the work party just now. I've taken the rods out of the water whilst I've been doing it. I've just been woodchipping a few swims up. But I'm going to get the old boat out, the rowing boat. And what, um, what I've had ready is I'm making up a massive, massive solid bag. Which is just gonna rub out there and just drop it in. Because I mean, if I try and cast that, I probably have more luck breaking my rod one out when I'm actually all trying to get out there. I mean, it's a big old hefty bag. There's plenty of bait there for a nice big catch. Just come and hoover it up. I wouldn't mind trying to get into some deep water or off one of the or off one of the snaggy trees, but not too close. See, that's the thing with using a boat. You have got the accuracy, which is a uh, brilliant advantage when fishing, especially in a place like this where the fish sometimes can be in specific areas, but where you can't cast. So that's one of your major advantages. But um, yeah, things are looking up. I mean, I'll update you guys if I definitely am staying, but the rod's going to be out there soon. So if it does go out, then I probably am going to stay. So happy days. Right, let's crack on.
Okay, right. Well, good news. I'm uh, I'm staying this night as well, which is a, a brilliant thing, really. Uh, I've seen we've seen loads of fish on top right now, so decided to put the. Um, yeah, there's, there's two by your. Uh, by the thing right now, is there, mate? Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. So what I decided to do, I decided to get one of my uh, rods that I was talking about, and uh, use a controller that I wanted to do. So I kind of improvised a bit because I didn't have the right stuff for me, which is kind of foolish because it's an awesome rig though. It looks really yeah, cool. Yeah, it, it works. That's what counts. I'll show you. It yeah. to, I'll show it to you guys in a little while once I bring it in. Uh, it's got a regular moth fly on the end of that, really, which is just a basic edible fly this time of year. There's plenty of them in the water. I mean, I woke up um, yes, um, this morning, really, looked in the old bucket, and there was about two or three of them just sitting in there. So it shows you the hatch has started, and uh, there are also different flies on top. So there's quite a bit happening, really. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Sam's down here with me. She's, uh, she's good, isn't it? Yeah, I've just come down to her, sit with Ben. Yeah. Can I have a cup of hot ting? Um... I mean tea, don't you? Yeah, ting, whatever. We we, we did it. We've done a lap of the lake and um, round again where the area is. We actually went for a little bit of stalking, um, but as the responsible angle, what Ben is, there's a bit of rope in the water, and he was paranoid that if he did hook sign, it would. It, I'm not going to swear, but it would mess his uh, mess his situation up. So he quickly wound in. Yeah. We've come back round. To be honest, we're just watching the land now. Um, <clears throat> I'm not as as confident that the fish are going mad on the flies, Ben seems to think that they are definitely feeding on them. Um, well, we've seen about three or four of them down there and they were definitely feeding on, on something because they were slurping the water, as you said. Yeah, they were. pointed it out, you know. Yeah, they were. Yeah. So they had to be been after something. I mean, there are a lot of flies here because literally, for some reason, in the still right now, you can see loads of them. Yeah, that's so true. Look, yeah, I mean, you can see all the little swifts still going crazy for them, chirping around with the swallows as well now. Mm, and they're, exactly. just, they're hitting the water all the time, constantly. Uh, it's actually been a work day today. It's in the car, I don't know if Ben's told you. Uh, we've just been um, just sorting everything out. Uh, the shared light, there's basically nothing in it. bar of uh, wood and uh, wood chip the swim out um, which is a swim which uh, looks really really good Ben is definitely going to be fishing it at some point yeah I mean totally that's probably one of my uh, the swims I haven't tried just yet but it's definitely one on the list you know to try around here because I've only fished it fish down here yeah I'm sure yeah well I mean I've only fished this lake a few times so I'm not really 100% known on the swims really so I've got to try all of them but uh, yeah, but yeah Right, well, I just thought I'd run you through my um, setup quickly. Uh, basically, this is what I'm doing. I mean, for these sort of like flies around here, it's quite a simple tactic, especially if you kind of push for equipment with yourself at some stages. Um, all I've done, I've got some of my fly fishing gear, as I said, and uh, maybe it's actually tangled, which is not good at all. Um, well, what I've got, simple, simple little uh, fluoro, bit of fluoro, 12 pound airflow fluoro, which is used for fly fishing. On the end of that, perfect little imitation moth fly, which will just sit there perfectly amongst all those little um, black flies anyway. I mean, so many out there, you wouldn't really miss that at all. Um, then I just got a simple controller. I didn't have any stops, so I had to use two cork balls really. I mean, they definitely worked because... That adds to the buoyancy. As well as that, mate. Yeah, you can see it as well. You can see the two little balls floating around out there, along with the float. But, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the basic little rig there, especially for a bit of stalking. Using my uh, one of my carp rods, which I actually should be using a little a margin rod, which is fairly soft, but got my uh, faithful little Dewa Regal reel there. Okay, right, well, uh, not totally sure what the time is right now, but um, my rod's just rattled off. I've got the fish in the net now. It's been recovering for a uh, few minutes in the water. It's been getting effort ready. Uh, weighed him in everything. He's a uh, 17 pound five common. 
you can see in there, pretty comfortably quite difficult. First of the session, I'll try and use this light here. Yeah? Standing carp, let's get, just get it back quickly. Not no faffing around or anything. It's just, uh, I don't think I'm going to do a photo this time. There he is. You see him or not? That's a big boy. Absolutely beauty. It's full of blooming energy for some reason right now. I don't know if, it, I don't know if the night the time's brought him out or something like that, but yeah, brilliant stuff. Alright, let's get him back. Okay, right, well, uh, time is uh, 5 minutes to 11. Um, I've been up for a few hours now, really, just to get myself sorted out. Uh, I had a fish last night, which, which was quite a bonus. I was quite happy with that. First fish of the session. I'm here for a few more hours, then I'm off home, but... I mean, three days, I should have had a few more, but I don't know. It could have been conditions, could have been my spot. I'm fishing dead shallow water. I'm pretty much being robbed of my bait every single time I put bait out there, because of the uh, coots and the swans, so... I don't think the fish are feeding that much. I've probably had to go to deep, deep water to get a few more. But it's definitely something to bear in mind for next time. Um, yeah, £17.5. Well chuffed with that one. Beautiful common. Nice deep belly on it. I did think it would be bigger at first, but obviously not. It was, it was still a stunning carp, you know. But I noted it down in my little book. So, um, swim-wise and fish. But um, it's casted out the rod, another rod again. On the left-hand rod this time, which didn't go off. And uh, what happened was I reckon the uh, crayfish had been at it and uh, nicked, nicked my bait on the end of the hook really. Took off, um, took the bait off the hair. I just had a single cr crab and cray dumbbell on there. It took that. So what I done, I recast it with like a, ch with, like a um, KD approach this time. So I got, um, I got half of a, uh, half of a one of these uh, pack pop ups, one of the um, marathon mix. Chopped that in half, tipped it off on, on top of the um, crab and cray dumbbell. Put it in a solid bag, put some FT pellet in there and some, and some crushed boilie. And I'll set it back on the spot again. Happy days, really. Hopefully, we'll be able to get one off there now. But then again, all the fish I'll be coming at you in the evening, which is something to uh, sort of play around in your mind with whether or not what time they're going to be feeding or whatever, you know. You never know. This rain might um, bring them out on top, probably, because it might ox oxygenate the water. But yeah, it's not going too bad, really. That fish is alright, I mean, hoping for more, but end of the day, that's fishing for you, really. You can't expect to catch 24 7 all the time, really, unless you really have got the fish feeding. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll update you guys before I leave, or if anything else happens. So, uh, yep, yeah, alright then, talk to you guys later on then. Okay, right, well, it's just coming up to um, 2.30 soon now, five minutes to go. Um, I'm leaving at 3.30, so what I'm going to do now, take down a bivvy. Get it ready to, to be packed away, really. Leave the rods out, of course, so until last knock ins, really. Um, yeah, I mean, one fish out of three days. I was expecting a few more, really, four at least, but that's the way it goes sometimes, you know, that's fishing for you. Um, but chances could increase as the weather does improve. Could haul a lot more on a day, you know, and like even, even a few nights. Um, the fly hatches have started again though, you can see the swifts, they're all diving around, looking at going for the surface. Can't see any carp though, so another indication they're probably up, probably in the upper layers now. Um, but all in all, it was not something a bad session, it's been a nice relaxing session for myself really. Um, but anyway, catch up next time on another episode of Crazy Carping really. Um, I'll probably be coming back down to the syndicate, or if the season does re when the season does reopen, we're heading down to Walthamstow to try and bag a few big carp on, on the lakes down there. But uh, for now, it's, 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 this is the end of another episode, really. So um, cheers for watching, guys, and uh, see you next time.